Welcome to the Advanced Hobby Lab. Today is the third part of my multi-part series on Project MicroX, the prototype. Before I start building the finished product, I want to build a simpler version of the project to help identify any issues I may not have noticed during the planning phase. I'm going to start by making some quick sketches in Onshape. This is going to help me get a basic idea of how it's all going to look and how all the parts are going to fit together. When I have something worth testing, I can print it out. I printed these parts out in brown PLA because I happen to have some extra brown PLA from another project that I don't need anymore. It will work perfectly fine for a prototype and then I can print the final version in different colors to get the right color scheme. This part is what I call the electronics plate. It will make up the top of the chassis. It has six mounting holes for servos around the perimeter with the servos facing down. Around the border, there are eight screw holes for mounting onto the lower part of the chassis. In the center, there are mounting posts for the electronics. I measure these mounting posts to line up with the proto board and servo controller that I will be using for this project. Underneath the electronics plate, I will mount what I call the base plate. It has six bearings that will align with the servos to provide extra stability to the shoulder joints. In the center, it has a cavity that will fit the 2.2 amp hour battery that I have picked out for this project. Along the edge, I've added a notch that will mesh tightly with the electronics plate. It will help align the parts during assembly and create a tighter seam. I designed this bracket to be used as a shoulder joint. It has a groove for mounting the servo horn with a notch on the opposite side for mounting onto the bearing joint on the base plate. In the center of the notch, there is a smaller hole for tightening the servo horn down onto the servo shaft. There is a cavity on one side for mounting the leg servo. The cavity provides support as well as hides the servo for a cleaner look. It also has a groove along one side for rounding the servo cable. I mirrored the shoulder bracket so that there is a right and left bracket. This makes sure all the leg servos are pointing in the same direction. The leg piece for this robot is very simple. It is also completely symmetric so that I can use this one design for both the right and left legs. Each side contains an indent for a servo horn with a small hole on the opposite side for a set screw. The feet are mostly placeholders at this point. They are symmetric as well, so I can use this one design for all the legs. The feet just provide a little extra support so that the prototype won't be walking on the servos. For the final version, I will make something that's a little bit more aesthetic. The prototype will use the PCA9685 servo controller, the buck converter that I prepared in the last episode, and a Raspberry Pi Pico W. To wire everything up to the Pico, I will be soldering together a breakout board. The breakout board will have nine servo ports on one side for controlling three of the legs, as well as a small terminal block for connecting to the buck converter and providing power to the whole robot. In the center, there are two rows of 20 female pin headers perfectly spaced for mounting the Pico. On the other side, I will solder four header pins to be used for the I2C interface to the external servo controller. With all the parts ready to go, we can start the assembly and see how close my tolerances were. This robot has 12 servos to install, each with its own servo horn. To save time, I will only be using one screw to secure each servo. Since this is a prototype and I have no intention of keeping any of the 3D printed parts, I will be using screws to install the servo horns instead of using glue, which is usually the easier option. I'm still going to zero the servos before I install them because I want to do some testing and confirm that this robot can stand on its own power. While installing the electronics plate on top of the base plate, I can see that the two pieces don't mesh as tightly as I intended. I didn't take into account the height of the servo horn when installing the shoulder servos. Fortunately, the screws are long enough to hold the two pieces together so I can finish the assembly. As I'm wiring everything up, you can see how chaotic it has become. This robot definitely needs some wire management. I'm thinking of routing the servo cables past their shoulder servos between the base plate and the electronics plate with a cutout allowing them to come up through the electronics plate. With everything wired up, I can power it on for the first time. There are a few things I noticed. I neglected to add a cutout for the buck converter to attach to the battery while the battery is in the battery compartment. For now, I can just lay the battery out on the desk. I also neglected to add a power switch. I currently have to physically remove the battery to turn off the power. A switch wouldn't be too hard to add and would provide a lot of convenience. 
While I have everything wired up, I wanted to test out the power requirements. I did some power estimation in a previous episode, but testing on the prototype will be more representative of the final build. I hooked up the robot to my desktop power supply and connected my multimeter to measure the amperage. The peak amperage is about 3.28 amps. My buck converter is only rated for 3 amps. This may be a problem. I could either install a second buck converter or accept that the hexapod will be slightly underpowered. I'm going to leave it as is for now, but I'll watch to see if this becomes a bigger problem after some more testing. A few final thoughts. I designed the prototype chassis to be bigger than it needs to be so that the electronics would fit easily with room to spare. In the finished version, I will condense the chassis around the electronics and give it a more sleek look. I also think I made the legs a little too long. Shorter legs may be easier for the servos to handle and might just look cooler. All in all, I am pleased with how the prototype turned out. In the next episode, I should have the finished hexapod ready to go. So be sure to subscribe for future project updates. And if you found this project interesting, give me a like or leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.